In the summer of 2014, I traveled to Europe with uh, friends and we went on a Jewish history tour trip and we stopped off at the Normandy Cemetery. And uh, as I was walking around extremely overwhelmed and moved and touched by the solemnity and the hallowed nature of that very, very precious and holy space, I realized that there should be a few more Jewish stars than there are. 11,000 Jews were killed as part of the U.S. Armed Forces in World War II, and they represented about 2.7% of all U.S. casualties. So if you just think about it for a minute, Normandy has about 10,000 uh, soldiers buried there. There should be about 270 Jews, give or take. Um, so I went online and I, I literally counted all the, the Jewish stars and there, there were 149. Where are the missing Jews? There were so many mistakes made through the fog of war. It was a less technologically sophisticated time. Records were lost. Together we run all the operations. When it's, it's kind of amazing how many things happen in order for the government to agree for a marker change. And then when they agree to a marker change, there are families involved and there are travel and there are ceremonies and there's a whole host of things that have to happen. There are two criteria that we have to go through to get a headstone changed. The first is we have to confirm with absolute certainty that the soldier lived as a Jew, fought as a Jew, and died as a Jew. Uh, this involves extensive research uh, using publicly available sources and also confirming that research with the family, with using their recollections and the personal records that they have. And the second criteria is we need a family member to make the request. A living family member that can stand up and say, this soldier lived as a Jew, fought as a Jew, and died as a Jew, and we would like to see the headstone changed from a Latin cross to a Star of David. The government has super high standards um, in order to affect a marker change. We think that it's great that they have such very high standards, but to meet those standards uh, really requires a, a mountain lift of data. Um, and so that has to all be directed, and, and I have the privilege of doing that. What motivated me uh, was, at that point, uh, thinking about the influence that my late father had on me. My father was a chaplain in the American Army. He was a liberator of the Buchenwald concentration camp and spoke a lot and often and with great emotion and depth about his experience as uh, one who ministered to soldiers during the Second World War. So much of my childhood was meeting soldiers who he helped in the course of his uh, tenure as a chaplain. I'm a professional genealogist and I'm on staff with Operation Benjamin. Uh, my main function is to fulfill the role of historical family research. Um, that also includes uh, research for the time periods in which our soldiers lived and in which their families lived in the United States and abroad. And Operation Benjamin is a very unique style of genealogical research and it really has a real world effect on families, not just immediate families, but extended families. Operation Benjamin is named after Private Benjamin Garadetsky, and he was a medic, uh, and he was killed in a German air raid after serving three years in the army. Um, and he was the, the first person who went through the process. We learned so much by going through the process and finding relatives and going through the appeals process with the American Battle Monuments Commission. Uh, and it was such an overwhelming experience for us, we actually named the whole project uh, after him and that's how it became Operation Benjamin after uh, Private Garadetsky. So our goal is to reclaim Jewish American heroes um, and to, for, for the Jewish community as a whole to reclaim them, for American society as a whole to teach them that Jews in every, every way participated and continue to participate in the protection of democracy and the defeat of evil and the defeat of terrible things in the world. The future of Operation Benjamin is bright in the sense that we have a mission that's very, very defined. We understand the system, we understand uh, the bar that we have to reach, the very high bar we have to reach. Uh, sadly, we have a lot of 
um, a lot of heroes to deal with, a lot of men who are killed in action. And we are in, indeed, after 75 or 80 years, we're uncovering stories, we're retelling stories, we're opening up new chapters. And so uh, the folks at the ABMC are, are really excited by what we do because the level and depth of research that we've done uh, begins to bring these people, their stories back to life.